Scotty, I'm really excited. We've travelled an hour out of Seoul. It's only 30 kilometres, but Seoul's a big, busy city to one of the most remarkable places you'll find in Korea. This is Suwon, and the structure that we're standing on is just blowing my mind. It's called Hwasung Fortress, and yep, it's pretty spectacular. It's lovely to be here, but the story behind it, it's a bit, it's a bit grisly, to be honest. There was this wonderful King John Geo 220 odd years ago, and he built it to honor his father, Prince Sado. Uh, unfortunately, his father died pretty horribly. Prince Sado's old man, told him to commit ritual suicide, but he refused to do it for the love of his son, King John Joe. So the old man locked him in a tea chest. Until he died. Until he kicked the bucket. <laughs> what a grisly story. But what his son built for him uh, is really quite incredible. 48 different structures. This amazing wall, which is like the Great Wall of China for me, this is just incredible. Six kilometers long. And what is truly remarkable is it only took two years for them to build. I love this wall and luckily I get to walk it, but Trev's wearing his kitten heels, so you stay here, mate. I'm going to go for a saunter. What, with your winkle pickers? <laughs> Hwasong Fortress was used as a military base back in the late 1800s before falling into disrepair. It was brought back to life in the mid-1970s, a project costing north of a billion dollars. All of these wonderful repairs were only made possible, Trev, because secret and detailed plans were found not long after King John Geo's death, yeah. about 20 or 30 years after he passed away. In a secret chamber, there was these really highly detailed schematics of the wall, the palace and the surrounds. Wow. And so they were able to do these wonderful repairs. Oh, look, I think it's sensational they've been able to retain this. This is an amazing piece of history. But Scotty, let me share something with you, my friend. If I was going to invade the castle, I wouldn't come and try and climb the wall. I'd just get a balloon and just fly over the top. <laughs> <laughs> this place is just huge. To cover it all, you'll need three hours, and it's a fascinating walk and a bit of fun too. The guards in traditional dress love to pose for a photo. Oh, oh Scotty, halfway point. <laughs> And we've reached a pretty important place. This is one of those incredible floodgates. There are four of them designed, and they're on the major channels that armies would have marched down as they were coming to take over the fortress. And what would happen is the gates would just burst open and wash all these guys away, and they'd, they'd be gone. It's so clever. Well, Scotty, I'm pretty excited. You know, this magnificent fortress was protected by an army with bows and arrows, hence those beautiful little windows to shoot through. Those windows, I think, Trevor, are called crenellations and they've been around for centuries. And they have. And it doesn't surprise me that you've done some investigation into this because <laughs> I saw you with an axe in Canada. You were a legend in your lumberjack I... shirt. But this is a lot of fun and we've got to have a shot. Come Let's on. go. OK. Okay, guess what? Now we're gonna go and get him. We were pretty good with axes. Yeah, let's stick to axes. After a bit of fun here at the archery park, a walk along the wall at sunset is a truly magical way to end your day in Suwon. 